Perko, how's it going? Just doing a little bit of setup right now. Hope you guys have had a fantastic Friday. I need to get some water before I get started here. People start piling in. Hey, Queenie. Hey, Adriel. Is it Raleigh? Hello, Jose. Have I trained or tried out the Jackdaw yet? Adriel, no. In fact, I haven't even injected the skill. I have no desire to fly the ship. Wouldn't mind killing a few, but don't really want to fly it. All right, here we go. Uh, not a huge. I mean, no, I'm not a huge fan of Tech Three Destroyers. If you if you put it that way, that's that's absolutely correct. I don't really like the ship class at large. But in addition to that, I just don't really want to be flying frigates or destroyers. So you're not really gonna, you're not likely to see me in one of those anytime soon, unless there is a dire need for having tackle in a gang. What is the jacked out price at right now? Is it dropped down to a sub 100 yet? Nope, not no Dixie anyway. Yeah, I've been seeing. I've been looking at the Jackdaw a little bit. Uh, I'm relieved to see that it doesn't. It's not likely to be using an oversized afterburner. That seems not the way to fly it. Um, it seems that the two ways to look at it, or a hybrid between these two, is to have a whole bunch of medium shield extenders, or a whole bunch of medium ancil shield boosters, or something in between the two, some mixture of those two. And I've seen some pretty crazy tank numbers out of the Jackdaw. In addition to the uh, signature bonus on it, it looks incredibly difficult to kill, but on the other side of the the equation is that it doesn't have an oversized prop, typically, so... Even though it has amazing tank, uh, it's going to be a lot more easy to catch and kill, even if it takes longer. So yeah, I am looking forward to killing them, but <laughs> primarying them may not be uh, my first choice. Jackdaw is too slow to do anything really meaningful. I find that a very amusing statement. Um, to me, it goes kind of typical destroyer speeds. It seems balanced speed-wise. In fact, it seems like a relatively balanced Tech 3 style ship. You get some decent, um, attribute, decent um, effect out of having one mode versus another. Like, the only way you're really going to be remotely booking it is if you're uh, using a prop mode. But when you have the prop mode on, it doesn't seem all that slow. In comparison to the other Tech 3 Destroyers, it's very slow, but I'd say the other Tech 3 Destroyers are not well balanced. But I think the, the biggest issue for me is that they don't really have a role. They don't have a, a niche that they're fitting other than being the best Destroyers available in the game. So, you know, whatever.
Hey, Dan Crow. Yeah, the only real use I see for the Jackdaw is um, just being incredibly durable brawling. Or tackling. Like, in incredibly durable. It has... Like, good buffer tank cruiser level hit points with um, frigate uh, signature, frigate shield tank signature. It's um, pretty amazing in regards to its tank. And pretty cap stable. It'd be very difficult to um, shut off mods with a newt. Suddenly makes most after um, or assault frigates worthless. Pretty much, they they do a good job of displacing assault frigates from any meaningful role. They're able to go into the same places that assault frigates are able to go. They go faster than assault frigates. They do more damage than assault frigates. They apply better than assault frigates. They tank better than assault frigates. They tackle better than assault frigates. Something assault frigates really do, where they can be anywhere near competitive. They're not even cheaper. <laughs> Uh, it's very stupid. It's an interesting concept. It's the same sort of issue I see with Tech 3 Destroyers that you eventually had with Tech 3 Cruisers. And that you had this idea that um, you have a ship that's able, that's a generalist, but it's not a specialist. But instead, it's a generalist that's better than the specialist in every regard. So it just ends up being, uh, ends up displacing the specials. Alright, so I really need to lose a ship or two just to get some insurance money back so I can fly different ships and put insurance on ships. So um, I'm actually kind of hoping this Myrmidon dies just so I can insure something else and fly something else. I don't understand Hardcore Girly in the slightest. He's constantly camping this gate. But he never fights. He never tries to gank me, even though he really could. I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand that guy. Yeah, well, the Assault Forget balance pass was very ill-conceived. You had some ships that got a huge amount of benefit out of it, and then you had other ships that were just thrown into uh, the waste bin. It was, it was very poorly implemented. Very, very poorly implemented. In general, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of how the interactions in, in power level between Tech 2 faction and Tech 1 ships has, has played out. I don't like that faction ships and Tech 2 ships are clear winners in most in most regards. Especially in the smaller ships, on cruisers and frigates. You don't see it as much for Tech 2, but it can still be it's still very present with uh I'm sorry, it's it's still present with battleships. I, I really enjoyed in the past, if you had a ship that was fit specific, uh, fit well and flown well, like a T1 hull could be fairly competitive versus a Tech 2 hull, or even a faction hull. And these days that's not really the case at all.
I like how that didn't give me okay, pilots. And I automatically jumped because I'm bad. Are they warping? They're lining. And they warped, just as I did that. Should have waited a little bit longer. Now my MGD's on cooldown. That's unfortunate. Hey, Dimitri. How's it going? No Weschel? If the meta wasn't based mostly on speed and tiny signature, then they probably could have a decent role for Assault Frigates and Tech 3 Destroyers. It was better than the Battlecruiser Balance Pass? I think the Battlecruiser Battle Balance Pass actually was better than the Assault Frigate Balance Pass. I disagree with you there. There weren't a lot of losers out of that balance pass. And another thing is they maintained the identity of a lot of battle cruisers. But they did a fairly good job with it. The biggest losers were the um Hurricane and Drake, which I'm I'm sure is what you're referring to, is those those two ships. It wasn't the best choice even then unless you flew a wolf. The wolf, okay, the wolf was good, but it wasn't that good. That, that was the fun thing about the wolf with two mids, is that you can get under the guns of the wolf. And not the tracking bonus, you can't. It's actually, is is conceivable for a, like, a T1 frigate to, to kill a wolf, although it was fucking terrifying. The Harbinger didn't really get nerfed from the uh, rebounds. In fact, I would say the Harbinger got a pretty good buff. The, the Harbinger is able to fit a lot better. There's there's nothing really weaker about the Harbinger now than before. The only thing that's really changed is the uh, relative power of weapon systems, the relative lack of power of uh, medium weapon systems, their lack of range. It's not so much a ship, it's just the change in the meta game. Dealing with post VB uh, logistics. Oh, you poor baby, Dimitri. Oh, you don't want to go gate to gate? Oh, I'm so sorry, Dimitri. Well, maybe next time you'll consider going gate to gate with your carriers. QQ. <laughs> I'm sure you mean light years, not astronomical units. It's not so bad if you actually go get to get Dimitri. It's not so bad. Then again, I don't know where you're flying around, so there's that. I guess I can go directly to the large. Doesn't look a lot scary. Syndicate is not good for a carrier jumping gate to gate. gate. Oh. Well, it's no big deal if you're uh, going with a group. But if you're flying around solo, yeah, I would not do that either. I 
Last time I was in Syndicate, it was incredibly dead. I'm surprised you actually say that, though. Seems like it'd be relatively safe to do that with a scout. Or two, or three. A couple friends, you know. Hey, Pop. I'm really excited to see if CCP are going to put the missile application mod things on Sissy. I I am not excited to see that. I'm anticipating uh, the drone overhaul all over again. And people just using missiles that apply perfectly, you know, me medium missiles applying perfectly to frigates, torpedoes applying perfectly to cruisers, all that sort of shit again. I don't anticipate it to happen quite like that, but I could totally see that happening, and it would bother me greatly. The CCP doesn't seem to have the QA or the testing ability to really get a firm idea whether or not something like that is going to be um, in a good spot after, implement after implementation. They just don't have the time to uh, figure that shit out. Why do you have to be at the keys? Why do you have to actually be paying attention to your, your stupid little alt here? Fuck you, guy. Fuck you, buddy. I should lock you and you should explode. That's that's how this, this relationship has to play out. It's the only way. Oh, we just started in fob. What's that even Tanglings for? Kind of confused. Tank use skirmish, info, and shield. None of these seem like that. Maybe the sepal? And succubus, maybe? These guys, I guess? Yeah, Tanglings sepal would be terrifying. What's the new soft changes hit? Uh, what do you think about it? If you like hate it, how do you think it's going to affect low sec people? Um, let me see if I can get this fight. I, I don't have a lot of good opinion on it, unfortunately. And everything's off scan. Fantastic. <clears throat> but yeah, um, as far as the, the soft stuff, it seems like it's going to be a good way to, to, to force fights out of null sect dwellers, which is nice. Um, I don't really have much opinion on how all the details have been written up. I haven't really spent any time looking at it. So hopefully it's going to allow me to get more fights with friends. That would be cool. I, I, I don't know how enjoyable it'll be, it'll be for everyone. We'll see. Well... Let's let's be fair, uh, Vince or Vice. Sorry, Vice. Talking about heavy missiles, they just need a they need a looking at anyway. N not not even talking about missile application mods. Heavy missiles desperately need like a, a good look look over. They're awful right now. 
and CSP is very um, happy just leaving them that way, which is unfortunate. Or, I guess happy is not the best word, but it seems that CSP is content with just leaving the heavy missiles the way they are, for whatever reason. No, uh, you're not going to see me flying jackdaws anytime soon, Palvatore. That's a lot of confessors. That is a lot of confessors. What's going on over here? Oh, Kormonen just got really busy. I don't really know who all these people are. No handlebars? Okay. Guy seems very bumpy. Oh wow. That's a lot of business. A really big thing is making heavy missiles apply decent damage to cruisers. I don't know about that. I don't know if that's really the, the biggest issue with them. Though, I mean, the way I envision heavy missiles is that they do tremendous volleys, decent, not great, but decent DPS, great range, and then they require webbing and maybe a little bit of target painting, depending on the type of target. That's the way I envision them. If that's, whether or not that's, that's the right way to go, I think that would be an interesting way to go. I think that could be a lot of fun. But that could also be pretty freaking powerful, but I, I think that missiles and, and should be that way. Something that takes a little bit of um, of friends to make happen, but can be very powerful. I mean, I guess another way you can look at it is just make them apply perfectly to cruisers all the time, which I think is a very dull way to go about them and a pretty good way to make sure that they never do decent damage output. So. 
I think the the way that most players would eventually want them to look is with uh, that high damage, that high volley. There's that Confessor Gang. These guys are probably RR. Oh yeah, there is absolutely no point in me sticking around. They're going to have local tanks from hell. No, thank you. They're all beam fit, too. That's actually fairly surprising. They're going to do great damage to a battlecruiser. But I very, find it very surprising for a RR gang like that that they'd have beams. It means they don't really have to zoom around, which is cool for them. Don't have to worry about um, having to chase things down, which is nice. Yeah, that the double utility high slot on the confessor and the sepal is incredibly powerful. I don't I'm not the biggest fan of it. I really I really didn't like that change. In some ways it, it made um it weakened that ship, but in more ways it strengthened it. I understand it prevents them from being cut in vice. Hey Guinea, glad you're enjoying the YouTube videos. Why does there have to be a frigate gang on the other side of this gate? I'd love to just try to bump this guy and kill him. But having a dozen frigates shoot me because I have sentries and suspect does not sound like a good time. And he just jumped, okay. Imagine that Legion's already moved on. Now oh, there's Legion.
Yay! Thank you for getting forgetting about your alt. It is good. Let me warp, please. Warp, 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 warp. Thank you. All right, let's drop these off and hopefully secure resecure that uh, MJD. So the one really crappy part about doing that is that now I have Suspect Timer with like a zillion and one destroyer and frigate gangs around, which is very weak. It puts me in a really bad position against a lot of gangs that I've been seeing. Totally worth it, but a little bit frustrating. A dude named Frank. I don't see any Franks. Maybe Frank has already moved on. I'm pretty sure those guys were with the frigates that I eventually warped over to that gate, but it's hard to know. Oh, there's Frank. Or it was... Oh, you're talking about the guy I killed. No. Oh, maybe it's Maze for this Frank pod guy. I'm kind of tempted to pod kill him right now, but I'm not going to. Nope, Thorax warped. Might still get, be able to get a fight doing this. With all his frigates here.
God, it's so tempted to take sentries on these guys. Here we go. Probably should have been repping a lot more aggressively here. Yeah. Oh well. Decent enough uh, for fighting about a dozen people. <laughs> Sonic killed me? Sonic Mulder killed me? Or is that Sonic helping? Probably Sonic helping. Yeah. Definitely not worth. Uh, it seemed that I wasn't applying near as well as I should have been. So, just a bunch of people getting under my guns. It's really rough against that many Tristans as well. That's a lot of damage output from frigates that's going to apply perfectly. I'm assuming a lot of more T1 kind of stuff, though. Yeah. Man, I probably should have just been focusing Tristan's down the entire time instead of trying to go for like a fire tail. Fire tails didn't really. Actually, I think that might have been the guy I was shooting at. I mean, fire tails were a good shot. I don't know. I, I tend to have a really hard time hitting fire tails with a drone ship like this. Whereas Tristan's, I always assume it's going to be shield Tristan, even though the first one was a scram web. Be right back, guys. Yeah, but if I um, had been repping a little bit more aggressively there, I probably would have been able to kill at least kill the Firetail. It should have bought me at least, I would say, another 10-15 seconds worth of life if I was being more aggressive in my reps. Yeah. I think I did okay. There's just a lot to chew on. Alright, let's see here. Let's do a Cyclone. Haven't done a Cyclone in a while. So unfortunately, compact MWDs um, are still really expensive for cruisers for mid-sized mods. So uh, I'm not going to be able to. I'm still going to have to put on the implant for that. Let's see what are our drug shield cap? Not great. I can deal with it. I'm not going to deal with that. I got a suspect, so I'll let someone kill me on the outside of station. Um, Raving Lunacy, I'm going to give the icon changes some amount of time before I really render 
um, my opinion on them. Just spending a couple of days is not enough time to figure out whether or not once um, a icon change like this, something so vastly different for the UI is going to be a positive or negative thing for the game. I mean, there's some things I don't like, but I'm just giving it time. Okay, these guys are being bad, so I'm going to go over to a station with a clone facility so I can kill myself in a timely period. Claymore? No, Claymore's expensive. It's a good ship, just uh, it's very hard to get your money's worth out of it. Very hard. Pretty much um, with the, the changes, I, I'm able to identify drones. I'm able to understand, for the most part, ships in space, although I don't really understand the icons too well. I think that's the one with the clone stuff. That's the bottom station, right? Yes. So I, I don't really understand what a ship is. The only really only way I really know what, the, what a ship is is from looking at the, the type on my overview. So I'm, I'm focusing a lot over here versus icons in space. I'm just going to gradually learn what um, icons rec represent. So pretty much I know a combat ship's like something pointy and the the better damage output variant is something with a line under it. That's, that's about as far as I know for um, ship icons. Yeah, everyone seems to love the corpse icon, Pung. Everyone seems to love it. Apparently it's creating a lot of issues for colorblind people. How in hell would the icon changes create issues for the colorblind people? That makes no sense to me. I'm surprised you don't have a police issue Kronos. Um, I don't like the Kronos. I don't think it's a very good uh, Marauder. That's a big reason why I wouldn't have one. Jesus! Why are crash boosters so difficult? It seems that I get the worst penalties. Alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this one more time. Just because the two penalties of that crash booster, velocity is probably the worst of the two. I I really don't like crash boosters. Seem to be really bad penalty wise. All right, let's let's give these guys an opportunity to kill me. Then we'll head over to Blade if they don't. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Thank you, Tristan bro. Thank you, Tristan bro. Allow me to move them closer to your Tristan. It's punishment for using missiles? Yeah, probably. But nice. It's sensible to me. <laughs> oh, God. I'll go with it. Whatever. Whatever. Just deal with it. And this thing doesn't have drones. It's a good thing I checked. <laughs> K, 
guys are funny. Have fun with the corpse. Berserker fighters? No, berserkers are heavy combat drones. Fighters are only usable by carriers, a capital class ship. Go outside and step on some dog poop, it'll give you some luck. <laughs> okay. The new coloration for Mimitar ships, I just find it really interesting. It's it's a lot rusty. It's a much much rustier. Like you have these zones of kind of orangish hues. I like it. Also, I really also really like the way Mimitar ships looked in the past. But kind of interesting to change. It's a lot more apparent on bigger ships like battleships. All the lighting in that system is pretty freaking awful. Let's see, this, is this going to be any better? Nope, still really poor lighting. Okay, so um, talking about those penalties, I don't so much mind getting one shield boost penalty that pretty much negates the standard blue pill. I don't mind getting like a cap penalty or um, like a HP penalty, but my biggest problem is that velocity penalty, the the one that's not showing right now from the uh, the crash pill, and it seems to happen like 50% of the time. It's really frustrating. So the velocity penalty really sucks the life out of what the Cyclone actually has over most other battlecruisers, which is speed. Um, I normally go about this speed, um, 1500 MS. This with double nano. So instead, I'm going to get probably be going around 1300 MS, which is pretty much a really slow cruiser speed. It can be fairly surprising for a lot of players just how agile and fast the, uh, the Cyclone is in comparison to other battlecruisers. So I pretty much lost a lot of that advantage by getting a bag drug roll and deciding to go with it. But I'd nearly uh, spent about, what, 20 million isk worth of isk in drugs. Just, you know, I, could, I could do that for a long time. I could get bad rolls for a very long time. So eventually I, just, I typically just give up and go with a bad roll. Lighting shadows and even never that, that that great. The shadow system with the new shaders is is pretty good now. It looks really good. The only problem is light sources. You only typically have one light source. That's the star. So it can it can be pretty awful depending on the system you're in and where the sun's located. That that sort of thing. Like in this system, it seems to have a, a lot better light. So now we actually see the kind of like the colorations I'm talking about. I mean, it looks like the ship is rusty. And this is like kind of the, the classical thing with Mimitar ships. The material they use um, tends to get this kind of oxidation pattern, which is really cool.
We need binary stars in K-space? Yeah, that'd be interesting. I come to think of it, that doesn't exist right now. Have they implemented the dirt over time stuff yet? I think they have. I don't know if... Um... If they figure, if they put in, like, what will affect dirtiness of ships yet. But, um, it's very unlikely you'll ever see dirty ships on my stream. <laughs> Just because my ships don't tend to survive. A lot of people having fun in Sasaid. Let's over to August, see what's going on. A lot of suspects in here. It's neat. Uh, Furying turn of events, it seems they're all in it's like some sort of community room, so they're all in random organizations, which is super frustrating to try to identify. I imagine that's going to be the Tristan gang. I was very curious, uh, very tempted with that Tristan gang to uh, swip, swap over to a medium smart bomb. I was very tempted to do that. It would make it it made way, way more difficult to kill um, individual frigates, but um, it may have allowed me to kill about you know 500 plus DPS. Doubt I would have survived the time it was. It would have took a medium smart bomb to do that, but that's the thing. Hey, Nick. You always thought that smart bombs should have more damage and range on medium and small versions. Yeah, small versions don't really have a huge place in EVE. Medium smart bombs do, but they're kind of limited. I wonder I wonder how it should be approached. I would imagine more range should be the best way to go about it and slightly more damage. I'm not, I'm not really certain what place small smart bombs have in the game, though. It's kind of a weird module. Hey, Mr. Hutt. Mr. Hyde makes quite a few videos. Mostly streams these days, though. What am I listening to? I, I know this is Fatboy Slim, but... Huh. How far are we into this album? I wonder. Put on skirt! <laughs> uh, Vindicator, wow. Oh my. Some serious firepower in this system.
Where's the damn other station? Is that it? Oh, that's it. Nope, it's not it. The fuck is it? I thought it's normally to the left from the star. Uh, I'm so confused. I came in from Cormona, it should be to the left. Uh, let's see here. Or put together all these corporate locations are awful. I'll just align to it. Oh, I'm in Camilla! No shit. God, I'm awful. I thought I was in Hula. I, I was so thoroughly confused. Like, there should be two stations here! What do they do with the second station? God, that was confusing. <laughs> All right, that makes a lot more sense. All right, let's head over to Hula. Finn has about as much weight as you, Dietrich. Thing going on here? No. Looks like the party moved on. Everyone got their fill of Myrmidon. So, okay, so if there's no container kind of thing to it, that means it's been looted then. That seems to be what that means. Okay. Let me confirm this. I'm trying to learn these, these rec icons. So it looks like it's like that kind of half diamond without the uh the diamond inside there's there's no loot whereas these guys would have loot. Yep, okay. <laughs> Those are actually pretty valuable to have over here. I'm kind of tempted to pick them up. I'm not going to. Kind of a waste of time. Everyone's collective time. Here, let's look at the map while I'm hanging out. Hanging out off gate here. Oh man, that does not look good. Guess we'll head over to Golem. Sick. Why do you bank tank so hard? Uh, Vakisa, pretty much one of the things that Hyde and I really, 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 really love to do is flying gank tank style ships, battlecruisers and battleships. Now, the the kind of shitty part of, about flying around in an expensive style ship like that, like a like a dead space tank with crystals and gain link bonus battleship, is that y you get three options. And let me explain them then. Let me explain how often you get those options. So the first one is your opponents are never, ever, 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 ever going to be able to break your tank. The second option is that you're kind of at this like really perfect zone where your tank is just barely holding up or it's just barely breaking, but you're killing people and it's going back and forth and it's super exciting. And the third option is you just get killed. You get fucked over by newts or they have way too much DPS, way too many people and you just die very quickly because you have very little EHP. So it's very likely that it's going to be the, it's, it's mostly like that, that zone where you get that really amazing good fight is probably like maybe 5% of fights. Then you have a, a pretty sizable zone, maybe 30 to 40% of the time, the more depending on how aggressive you are, where you get into fights, your tank is way mo more than what your opponents can deal with, 
And then you have quite a bit of time, to, again, depending on how aggressive you are, where you just get killed. So it's either pretty much you're get, you're 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 just fine, no no real danger, or you're dead. So if you're doing PP highlight videos, which pretty much means either you got that amazing five percent of the time fight, or you got that those engagements where the opponents can't really do much, but you want to keep them interested, bait tanking is the way to go. So a lot of PP highlight videos, if it's a gank and tank style PP highlight video, people are baiting, doing their best to bait, doing their best to try to show the opponents that they're slowly breaking your tank and you're going up and down, up and down, up and down, slowly breaking, bleeding into armor, up and down, up and down, and up and down. You're trying to show as much leg as possible, typically. Oh, Neg. I know the feel. I don't know how many of those Tristans are hostile. I think CS4 is doing a public game, so... Those guys might be all friendly. Yeah, Vacky, so that's that's how it goes with a lot of gank and tank style fits. Is that you're just baiting the entire time. You're just trying to show... As much of that leg as possible. Try to keep your opponents interested, interested as long as possible. Think that they're actually have some hope of breaking you. That's that's generally the idea. Oh, you got your first still kill. What's this one? Is that an executioner? What is that? What'd you kill? Is that a slicer? You killed a slicer with a... Kestrel? Dude, good on you, Vakiza. Dude, fantastic job. That's awesome. That must have felt really good. Catching slicers with uh, T1 ships is one of the better feels that you can get when you're doing frigate PvP. Hail fest. More kinky to mix it with ginger ale, what? Finn, I find it amusing when you first started streaming that you didn't drink and you said that alcohol tastes awful. And since you've started uh, streaming, like, drinking excessively has become one of your major things. Drunk rums, etc. I find that a curious change. Your stream was like 50 seconds behind? Oh, my, Anisha, that's crazy. It's a really bad delay. Rocket Kestrels are so underrated. They're, yeah, they're really good ships. They are very good ships. They are one of the more powerful ships um, for being so underutilized, that's for sure. There's a very long period of time where Condors were super popular because they were faster. But they were locked to kinetic damage. So. I think it's pretty refreshing to see people uh, doing PvP and Kestrels. Oh, trouble with the internet, so sorry to hear that, Anishwa. 
Caracal. That's about it. What kind of plant is that? Is that a plasma one? Yeah! Cool. As far as I know, you can't really do active tanks in Tech 1 Frigates. Uh, and Cursus is a pretty good um, active tanker, full active tanker. But typically your, your active tank is uh, burst tanks in the form of MASVs and Ansel Armor Rippers. That's generally the way that um, the, the metagame has gone to. I mean, generally, um, that's that's what you did with uh, Frigates anyway, uh, as a single repper. Maybe a buffer module and a damage control or a damage mod. Um, dual rep active tanks for armor and medium shield boosters used to be kind of common, mostly with the dual armor reppers, but um, it's a lot less of a thing. I think mostly because solo PvP isn't much of a thing these days with frigates. And T1 frigates anyway. It's it's all about the faction frigates. And the faction frigates... I, I don't really know why they don't do full active tanks. I don't really have a good answer for that. Looks like there's some uh, stuff going down in Avadi. I think those deterrists doing things in there. I, th I think those reported a little bit earlier. Which means it's going to be another bust. I haven't really seen any kind of PvP going down in Avadi area. I had Binder tell me that there's some P faction warfare PvP going on over here, but I've never seen any activity on the map. Never, ever, 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 never, ever. That boy Slim video with Christopher Walken. <laughs> I think I know the one you're talking about. It's been a really long time since I've seen it, though. Actually, I could go to Nullsec. I'm probably not too far away from Nullsec entry point. Doesn't look like anything's going on in Null, though. Which is really surprising to me. It's...
All right, we're not getting any PvP in that direction, so we're gonna we're gonna head in a different direction to save a bunch of time by uh, just killing ourselves. A little bit of pod jump. And I think we're gonna fly in the other cyclone, the spare cyclone, and go in a different direction. Now let's hope tank the uh, drug rolls. Hope, 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 hope. Okay, I, I can deal with that. I can deal with that too. It's just gonna be a low HP run. It's like a low HP speed run. Low HP PP speed run. What's up? Let's not forget the implants. Do I have drones? No. At least I'm consistent. That is a good cat gif. Any shot? We'll probably be swapping to that soon. I had a stroke April 13th watching Sard on here, and YouTube was the only thing got me through. <laughs> Oh, wow. Not not sure if you, like, literally had a stroke, or... <laughs> not sure how to take that statement. Yeah, sure, uh... Dietrich. So this this cyclone is kind of a compromise, and it's um, been iterated on for quite a few versions now. So um, as you see with most of my battle cruisers and battleships, I really like to have MGDs, and I really like to have medium newts. So for the cyclone, that pretty much means that I'm going to be relegated to using a single uh, ancillary shield booster. Um, the major reason for that is that Missiles are not going to apply well at all to frigates without a web of fire. So pretty much like all my fits, I'm going to have at least a web of fire, double, double tackle, scram web or point web. So going with the burst tank. Um, for a long time, I did not use a medium newt on this style of MWD, MJD, XLASB burst tank. Um, more recently, with the advent of Tech 3 destroyers, I decided that I really needed extra newting power and I really need, wanted more range out of my newts. So I decided to sacrifice a rig slot. This used to be a rigger rig for better application to frigates and destroyers. And I put the Ansel on there, and I put on a medium newt. So instead of double small newts, I have swapped over to a medium newt and a small newt. Which has allowed me to really effectively deal with frigates. It allows me to really power through their tanks, turn off um, their tackle, turn off their propulsion, turn off their active tanks. And if anything, it's been as powerful, if not more powerful, than having that rigger rig. Also used to run with a uh, triple ballistic. Unfortunately, that's not all that possible with the medium newt. So I have then swapped over the double nano double ballistic, which is in itself pretty powerful as well. It allows the cyclone to do what it does best, which is be very nimble and mobile for a battle cruiser. Uh, I like hams are pretty much the only real choice here for missiles. It doesn't have a rapid light missile launcher bonus. Heavy missiles are in a really bad spot. Uh, I don't like having a smart bomb on this ship, mostly because the newts are more universally applicable, whereas smart bombs say I'm going to be swamped in ECM drones or Tristans, and that's not always going to be the case. I like to have the small drones, 
uh, two flights of uh, explosive and EM. It allows me to deal with all type, uh, types of tank for frigates and deal better with frigates. It gives me more spare drones to use against frigates because I'm usually fighting against frigates and destroyers. I got a warp speed rig on here just because I, I really qual um, want some quality of life improvement when flying in a bigger ship and having less than three AU warp speed is not very enjoyable to me. I like to try to get as many volume, as many fights as possible. I think that about covers it. I don't know if I missed anything. Do you run in, find, uh, find problems running into problems with Kaidi frigates? Not really. Um, either I catch them or I don't and I MGD away. I have a spare MGD in, in, the, in case I've been uh, aggressive with my uh, module MGD. And uh, quite often, if I'm dealing with frigates, I'll actually have the EHP on my ship to go through a reload or two of my Ansel booster, which is pretty cool against frigates. This ship is surprisingly nimble. If I overheat my MWD, I'm going to be going like 2.2 km per sec. It's I've caught a lot of frigates between my medium newt and uh, overheated tackle. Cap management. The Cyclone is one of the most cap-stable battlecruisers in the game. You can permanently run your MWD, no problems. You can run your MWD for a long period of time and still have plenty of capacitor to run your neutralizers once you turn it off, and you'll be cap-stable running your newts. It's uh, it's pretty insane how cap-stable the ship is. CSP was very generous with the cap on the ship. I insured, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh, you did have a stroke. Dinkle, that's awful. Jesus, dude. Well, I mean, Dinkle, have you looked at investing in something like a Razor Naga, something like with a whole bunch of buttons on it? I've heard of people pretty much playing Eve exclusively from the mouse using a 20-button mouse. Wow. No cat in uh, Mokan? I'm not partnered yet, Dietrich. I, I, I don't know if I ever will be partnered. <laughs> we'll keep on trying. Yeah, Cyclone's a really powerful ship. As it's uh, it's really affordable. It does fairly well in the um, the current meta game. You can run down frigates, destroyers, and cruisers quite effectively in it while tanking them very well. Neutralizers um, are very powerful against pretty much all smaller ships. You do you apply fairly well, especially if you decide to say forego um, the nicety of a warp speed rig. You can put a rigger on here and uh, apply incredibly well to cruisers and frigates, or and destroyers, not so much frigates. Frigates, you will, you really rely on your um, small medium nude to apply to. Turn off propulsion modules, turn off um, Ansel armor reps. I have applied multiple times Lulcer. It's um, not as simple as I guess you could hope. The uh, the notion that I'm a, playing a niche game doesn't really apply to the individuals, the, the, the admins that tend to look at my stream. Well, no, their their current minimum uh, viewer count, average viewer count, is 500 viewers, Nixarn, and it's only going to go up as uh, Twitch TV comes, becomes more popular. Hey, Archon. Not enough boobies on stream. Absolutely. You just start wearing a wife beater. Some man boobies. Alright. Let's do it for the view count. Doing it for the view count! Yes! Boobies!
Song name, um, we're playing Fatboy Slim. It's right here, right now by Fatboy Slim. Let's see, can I, uh, shave, save it? Uh, can I, can I look at the song? Maybe share it. Let's see. Share. No, that's not it. Um, how do I share? Share? I want to share a link. For the love of God, Spotify! I thought I could do this. Is that a code? No, that's, that's not it. Oh! Track link. Is that it? Yay! Okay, we figured it out. Haley's looks pretty awful, per usual. I haven't gotten a fight here in a while. I'm just going to go immediately over to the Flea at Kate. Preacher and curses. Blech. No, I didn't even look at the map heading in this direction. I'm just kind of hoping I'm going to find something over here. Doesn't look all that good. Anisha, keeping it cat uh, re relevant. Thank you, sir. I disabled the new star map. Uh, you do this. General settings. Try the new map. No. And it goes away. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of it either. I'm gonna assume that these guys are all inside, but I can hope. Everything in this on scan from here can fit inside the plex, and no one's shooting each other, so I imagine they're all gonna be inside. Yep, they're all inside. So this pretty much all of local is gonna be inside that plex. I'm just gonna move straight on. No, I don't need to hear multiple iterations. Hey, Squeebs. This is the same fucking song? What? Go away. Sorry, why never a Drake? I think it's fitting is great too. It's not. It's very, very limited shit. It's... 
It only performs really well with kinetic damage, which is okay. Honestly, it does very similar damage to the Cyclone with, um, even when not using uh, kinetic damage. But the thing is, it moves a lot slower than the Cyclone. It's like several hundred MS slower. Uh, it can only really do a passive fit. You can't active tank it. It's, it's, it's only going to ever be one style of, of, sh of fitting. It's either heavy missiles or heavy assault missiles with a passive tank. Um, it's not all that cap stable. It's just a very limited ship. It doesn't really do a lot that the Cyclone can't do. Now for gang style stuff, I think it's a better ship. It has potential to be a better ship. But, uh, for solo stuff, I, I much prefer the versatility and, um, the ability of the skirm uh, the Cyclone to skirmish. This song was on my Digimon album. <laughs> Digimon? What? <laughs> Oh, speaking of Drake's. Probably a POS. Yep, POS. Digimon's better than Pokemon? Oh, man, Dietrich. I don't know about that one. I have to disagree. Today I learned a Confessor can't hit a Jackdaw with super high transversal. Did you try scrambling the Jackdaw? Hey, Zell. Sard, if you had to drop a Newt or a Web, which would you drop? Why um, I dropped the newt. It's kind of a weird question to me. Oh, I'd keep a medium newt. The medium noob is incredibly powerful in this ship. It's, it's part of, I feel, it makes it as effective as it, as it is. Play that sword? What is this? Oh, Jesus. He was AB fit, so I couldn't get close enough to scram. He was AB fit, so I couldn't get close enough to scram. I don't quite understand that, Shaggy. I guess I just don't understand the context of the fight. Oh yeah, I, I would... I wouldn't drop the web, either, those squeebles. I think the web is incredibly important. The Rocket Jackdaw does 10 MN pretty easily. Okay. I don't know what kind of... T hmm. I, I, I haven't really looked at the 10 MN AB. The Jackdaw. I'm assuming a uh, MSB plus a cap boost or something like that. Check your contracts. Oh dear. Fido's! That is the best kind of gift in all the world. Thank you, sir. Fido Abe! Whose, whose corpse is this? I don't need this. I don't need this. I 
I'm assuming that's my corpse. Let, let them go free. Let them go free. Start planning to stream a full fleet PP because that would be like the New Year's Eve, but communicating with the rest of us fleet and trying to comment when you're doing. Um, that's pretty much if I'm going to be in a fleet and commentating, usually it means someone else is FCing. But even then, it's very difficult for me to commentate when I'm trying to listen to some, an FC say something. So it's it's all around very difficult to do. And if I'm actually managing a fleet, FCing it and talking through fleet, I'm just um. It's, it's pretty much the same amount of mental effort as talking is for me to type. It just takes longer. So it's unfortunately, it's, uh, it's about as difficult. Squeebles flies the cyclone quite a bit. Squeebles tends to prefer, um, full active tanks though. He's the kind of guy that's gonna fly a, um, an active tank, uh, cyclone, or an active tank, or a full active tank cyclone, or a full active tank merm. Like a full tank devoted merm. He's also the kind of guy that's not gonna use, uh, warp speed rigs or anything like that. Oh, here we go. Can't really tell what they're shooting. I don't know what they're shooting. What were they shooting? What were they shooting? They were shooting a person. It was rude. He's warping. He's warping. Okay, Tama, I know, has repair, so I'm going to go there and repair. I mean, f can be fun. I just... I really think it, re it requires the right mindset. A lot of people do it for their community and do it just to, to actually, you know, create content for a community, not necessarily to enjoy themselves, which is really rough. Um, I, it's, it's been a very long time since I've really wanted to FC a group.
Arthros. I am suspect. What's going on over here? People want to be doing something in Kadama. Not a lot of stuff on scan, but. Alright, see you, Nishwa. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool, Sweeps. It's asking a lot of um, people flying around to all be streaming, though. Editing is not the easiest part about it, type high. Cutting a whole bunch of video feeds is uh, actually a lot of work. Oh, hello. Is it the same group I shot at? It may have been. Again, no one's shooting each other. No one has suspect or anything, so they're not going to be on the outside. I'm just going to move on.
of extra and scan now. Oh, hi. Come on! Why is my MJD off? Oh, he's Scram, okay. I didn't see that. Well, that pretty much means I'm not going to be able to tackle him. So, I'm just going to bail. I didn't see a scrambler icon from the uh, Orthrus, which is why I was really frustrated there.
I'm just a loony. <laughs> This guy is um interesting tank. It might be an um LSV with a LC. Interesting tank. Very interesting tank. This is very rare to see. Back up, um, hacks in general have pretty good cap. But it's... I mean, it's it should be pretty much enough for him to permanently run this. My newts definitely helped out a lot there. Very rare to see this kind of tank. This is a very unpopular fitting in uh, Factional Warfare because it can't deal with frigates. Even with a medium newt, you're going to have a hard time dealing with Frigate Gang. You're just not really going to be able to apply. But against the Battlecruiser, that's a great fit. I wouldn't be surprised that Vagabond was gang linked either. No, 220s definitely do not track frigates. Medium guns in general don't track frigates unless they have weapon fires and tracking bonus. It depends uh, greatly if the frigate has an afterburner as well. Afterburners will make it very, very, very difficult to deal with the frigate. That was the Vagas links? Okay, so he was linking linked. Was, thank God I had a bunch of newts. No, no, the Vagabond, I, yeah. I, yeah, when I did see the Vagabond speed, I, I thought he was linked. I was okay with that, though, because I was expecting an Ansel Repper, not a LSB. Sorry, a L LSB.
Do you use velocity on the overview when using guns, or do you use angular? Uh, it's, this is velocity. This is straight ship velocity. I don't find angular having angular in the overview helps me much. Hmm. Hmm. This is no good. Didn't even need the NGD. How about that? Is the friendly figure pilot? Uh, he reshipped to a VNI to help with the Orthrus, and then the uh, the vagabond that I just fought was blue to him, so he couldn't really help out there. And now we have this Caldari Fac War, which I believe Sniper is with. Or no, he's Gal. Nice. I can kill the Vexer, uh, I might be able to kill the Vexer. However, um, on the other side of that gate, he had a, about a 15-man gang of frigates and Algos and Griffins and Lodgy and stuff that 
would immediately kill me afterwards, so not really worth it. That's quiet. There's that damn procurer again. I would not be surprised if I'm actually jumping into that gang. But they should be coming in from Kadama, not anywhere else, so I should be okay. What was that last module with the one, the Red Cross? That's a damage control. They re, um, they gave it a new icon for some foolish reason. Ha <laughs> I like you, Vexor guy. Oh, he's got guns! Interesting, this is like a gank fit arbitrator. Wait, I know Klops. I've seen him around. Oh, it's Ronin! Oh, Klops! Hey, awesome! Does he realize that my suspect dropped? Surely he does. It's unfortunate timing on the suspect if he's looking to fight. Which drugs can you combine? There's three groups of drugs. There's tanking drugs, there's application drugs, and then there's missile application. So you can have one of each. So you can have like an exile pill, you can have a drop pill, and you can have a crash pill. You can have a blue pill, you can have a frantix pill, and then you can have a crash pill. You could have a mindfuck pill, you could have a, um, let's see, what are it? Soothsayer pill, and a crash pill. There's a couple I didn't name, but... No recreational drugs? Uh, there are rec recreational drugs in the game, but they don't really have any effect on gameplay. They're all combat-purposed. The meat of this game is running around in your ship, so... Um, like, you can collect recreational drugs, you can trade them, you can't actually use them and buy them. Cocanium? <laughs> Um, Russian, I wasn't sure if the, uh, the Vexer was with the other dude.
Should you bring a logic for along? It's completely up to you, Rector. Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift. Everyone killed Tim Chinchilla, Taylor Swift. Um, Razor, my opinion on the new icons is I'm giving them time. Um, overall, I'm happy for the change. I think it's a positive direction. There's some things I don't like, but uh, I'm just giving it time. Um, really, you, you can't just have an opinion on the first day. This is the sort of thing that you need to get used to and try for a long period of time, at, like at least a week or so of playing, to get a solid idea of what's good, what's bad, what could you use improvement, what you don't like, whatever. Yeah, the UI scaling seems to be a big issue with it, but that's that's a bug. That's that's not an issue with the the new feature. So that's something that will be fixed hopefully soon. The biggest problem I have with the icons is that they obscure the ship. Are you talking about drones? Like drones will obscure ships that you see the brackets in space? Because I agree with that. I think the, the drone icons, the drone brackets in space, are very confusing. They're big. And in, it seems that... Um, I, I It may be like a, kind of a visual sort of trick because I'm not used to the brackets, but it feels like brackets are a lot more overwhelming right now. God, good money says this guy's a phylactic tank and not a burst tank. I will lose to that. Fuck it.
pretty much to be expected. Just uh, they have a gang, and I I don't. This is actually a pretty good fight without the gang. So there's that. I was pretty much expecting there to be about a you know a solid dozen of those guys. After you kill one of them, they don't tend to take well to that. Oh, someone's getting blopsed. Oh, that's hysterical. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Vengeance. <laughs> Don't die, Mr. Nemesis. Actually, die. Please die. Fuck you. Die. How funny. These bombers. These bombers, man. They're not doing well. I'm pretty sure that purifier is also going to die unless he's aligned. That's funny. That's funny. Blob strop, best strop. I do heavily enjoy that, by the way. Just uh, parties third partying, instigated by uh, a fight that I got. I, 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 that's one of the things I love most about streaming, is uh, kicking that kind of stuff off. All right, let's do one more ship. One thing about that fight, though, I really should have been more aggressive on scramming the frigates. Um, I could have gotten at least two frigate kills of people taking sentries being right next to me in scram range. I should have been able to do that, but I was uh, not quick enough on doing that. It's acceptable. I demand triple rep Hyperion. You're probably never going to see it on this stream. Unless I start living in low sec and can just take it into a fleet that's like immediately next to where I live. How to group them so fast? There's a button right here that will link or unlink all your sh uh, weapons. This is Rapid Heavy Missile Launcher Fit. Sackle. So this is a much better example of the, the new Mimitar coloration. It's, it's definitely looks rusty or has kind of like that oxidation pattern. It's, it's not an even coloration. It used to be kind of more professionally looking. It looks like there's no rust or anything like that. Now it looks like that, which I think I think is an improvement. Why is it fit like that? What do you mean, Amy? 
You don't know anything about Typhoons. Uh, Typhoon is a missile battleship. It's an attack battleship. With bonuses to missile damage output and uh, application. So what is confusing you about the fitting? That's true, Vice. I am using two warp speed rigs, though, so I warp almost as fast as a cruiser. Why passive? Why rapid launcher? Um, okay, so let's just go over the fitting. So this is kind of a, a kind of a small gang or solo style fitting. Um, it is designed to skirmish. Uh, that rapid heavies are going to perform better at hitting cruiser-sized targets and smaller than most battleship-sized missile launchers. So they are pretty ideal for running around if you're going to be trying to shoot at smaller stuff, which is pretty much all I'm going to ever be shooting. I have a heavy newt to disable smaller ships. It has long range and can pretty much cap out a destroyer or smaller instantly and very quickly cap out a cruiser. MJD is for offense and defense, um, getting away from gate camps and MJDing onto targets and then Unloading my rapid heavy launch missiles payload. Um, point web. Um, the web is for better application, slowing down uh, targets after I've MJD'd onto them. Long point is because I'm using a longer range weapon system. And I find it very useful to have long points with heavy newts. The 16 air plate I find useful given that I don't typically kill a cruiser in a um, single load of missiles. It, it pretty much requires me to have some level of HP. It doesn't slow my ship down much either. It barely affects the agility and and barely reduces the speed of the Typhoon. Um, the limited tank is just because I'm trying to be more of a gank style fitting. Um, I'm using rigger rigs because even though uh, these, these missiles are essentially a cruiser size uh, weapon system, they apply very poorly. Otherwise I'd probably be using like a Cal Faction or damage rig here to up my damage per load of missiles. It's not a very effective fit. It's not a very effective ship, mostly because rapid heavies or just heavy missiles in general aren't very good. On ships like the Bark East or the Typhoon Fleet issue that have a damage bonus for um, heavy missiles, they're actually quite effective just because they have a lot of raw damage per missile load of missile, and if you can get some good tackle onto a target, they will apply quite well to cruisers and smaller. But it's just, it's more of a change of pace kind of fitting. I fly a lot of gank and somewhat decent mobility battleships. I don't typically do a lot of nanos on my battleships, but I tend to fit towards um, like a burst tank with an Ansel Ripper or an XLASP, have an MJD, MWD, um, having heavy newts to disable smaller ships, and then try to use weapon systems that are going to apply well down to smaller ships. Yeah, it's kind of like a hit-and-run typhoon. Yeah, that's actually exactly what I, I try to do. I try to unload my load of missiles onto something, kill it, and then and then do a reload and run away, and then come back and try to kill something again. It's very similar to flying in a rapid light missile ship, like a Caracal, or a Scythe Fleet issue, or an Orthrus. You don't need a scram because you have heavy newts? Yeah, pretty much. Um... Like, the idea is that I, I use a heavy newt cycle, I disable a frigate or a destroyer, it turns off its propulsion module, it sh slows down a lot, I start shooting my missiles at it, which should apply okay to a non-propulsion mod moving destroyer or frigate. Okay, not great. And then I'll be able to motor into web of higher range to get even better application. That's kind of the idea. How much is it worth? Um, the, the Typhoon hole itself is probably around 180, 170, something like that. They're one of the cheaper battleships just because they have, they're the attack battleship class. But they also, because of that, even though they're a little bit more mobile, they have about 50% less HP than normal combat battleships. So the total fitting is probably around 200 million ISK. Um, after insurance, I'm probably losing 60 million ISK. Um, the, the reason why I have Explosive and EM is that missiles in general take a lot of room in your cargo, and you're going to have, want to have a lot of different types of them. Is there a reason I have Explosive or EM? No, not really. It's just what I decided to go with to start. I mean, you could start trying to argue that there are more armor tanks or more um, shield tanks. But it really just comes down to jumping into a system, seeing what's available as targets, and then loading the appropriate missile damage.
The Foon Fleet issue is better for rapid heavy missiles because you get a dual web. I could have a dual web on this ship. It has the same number of mid-slots, Spice. I think the real reason that the uh, Typhoon Fleet issue is better is, one, the damage bonus, because you get more damage per load of missiles, which is incredibly va valuable on a rapid heavy missile launcher or a rapid missile launcher um, ship. And two, it has two utility high slots, so you can fit even more newts, heavy newts, or heavy newt and medium newt, something like that, and be even more effective at disabling ships, which is pretty much what either going to allow you to initially tackle something, um, or just stay alive, turning off the guns of a like a laser ship or a blaster ship. Why do I pop boosters? It's partially because of the police, uh, Vakusa. The other um, part of that is that uh, if I get a bad drug roll, I can just kill my capsule and then re-roll the drugs, pop new drugs, until I get a good drug result. Or a drug result that I can bear. Yeah, no problem, boys. How long does the MMJD take to deploy? One minute. Is it a backup in case your MJD is on cooldown? Yes. So, quite often I will initiate a fight with an MJD, which would mean my MJD is on cooldown for three minutes. So... If I think that I, I'm going to immediately need a bail, I just start, I anchor that MGD immediately, and then I'll have pretty much an MGD um, off cooldown in a minute, as long as it doesn't get blown up, and quite often people don't shoot it. And if they do, it just means they're not shooting me, which is nice. The Typhoon gets application bonus for uh, torpedoes and cruise launchers. It does not get an application bonus for heavy missiles. It'd be a lot better ship if it did. There's very few battleship missile bonuses that apply to heavy missiles. Very few. Pretty much all of the range and projection, uh, the projection, all the, pretty much all the projection and application bonuses on battleships do not apply to heavy missiles. Which is, um, pretty shitty in my eyes. I don't think that should be the case, but it is what it is. Doesn't the Golem have one? Um, I think it's 100% damage bonus does apply to heavy, uh, rapid heavies. Yes, I believe you're right. Let's let's look that up though. Yes, it does. But none of the uh, projection or application bonuses apply to heavy missiles. Bastion affects it. Um, yeah, it would increase the range of missiles. Yeah. Yeah, ra rate of fire doesn't really help rapids, rapid launchers all that much. It's not that, it's not a preferred damage, um, damage bonus. You, you want the straight damage bonus. And again, the entire idea of which bonus you want, tip, usually with weapon systems, you want a rate of fire bonus because you get more damage output over time. However, with uh, rapid launchers, because they have this huge reload time of 35 seconds, um, you want to have more damage in that load of missiles. You want to be able to kill more things in that load of missiles, which means that you want to have a damage bonus. That's why the ships like the, the Orthrus and the Scythe Fleet issue are so powerful with rapid light missile launchers. They're able to kill a lot of ships in that single load of um, of ammunition. Like an Orthos can kill like f like five frigates, six frigates, like faction frigates. Um, a Scythe Fleet can kill like uh, you know two to three faction or tech two frigates in its load of uh, rapid light missiles. It's very powerful. How do you find targets? I roam around a lot. Um, I pretty much learn areas where I likely get into combat. I So I go into areas like Factional Warfare Space, where players are constantly shooting each other over um, over um, Factional Warfare stuff. You can also look in the map, and there's a couple things to look for. So I'm going in low sec, so this is a PP-enabled um, zone. I look for a number of average number of pilots active in space in the last 30 minutes. I also look at the ships and destroyed in the last hour to get an idea of where PvP is happening and where players are actually at. Between those two statistics and just learning regions, I, I roam around and look for people to shoot.
Oh, I'm really not looking forward to the mislocation mods. <laughs> I'm anticipating the the drones change all over again. I'm anticipating people having like you know torpedoes that apply perfectly to cruisers and hams that apply perfectly to frigates all over again. If they stick only to low slots, it's probably not going to be like that. Except for maybe Mimitar ships that actually have low slots for it. It's I, I'm just really not looking forward to it because the the amount of quality control and quality insurance and testing that actually goes into the balance team behind their decisions is very minimal. They they are not able to really test out changes all that effectively. So it, it pretty much means that they just throw something out there and see what sticks, which is in very, in kind of infuriating as a player. A lot of the reasoning that the balance team uses behind um, their changes is usage metrics, which means that if they come up with an idea, depending on how players react to it, when they initially propose the idea to players, whether or not players are mixed on it or they really like it or they really dislike it, then they just release something and just see how it works. And it's it's it is sensible if they don't have like a full team devoted to balance that it happens this way. There's only so much testing you can do, and it's in it's only so you can only be so imaginative when you're looking at mo how a module is going to affect PvP. There's a lot of things that can just not work out the way you expect, and you know that's sensible. So if you don't have like a team of people devoted to balance all the time, then you're going to have a really hard time. Uh, Affecting good balance. Well, this fucking sucks. Hope these guys don't shoot me. God, I have a Drake and a Merm right next to me. It's no good. He's like almost moving towards me. I'm gonna give him some time to move away from me. Because uh, honestly, a Merm is like the last thing I want to be shooting at right now. I hate that bug so much. What I hate even more is that uh, Carker says it's not a bug, that's a feature. <laughs> yeah, let me just look at something. Oh, it's gonna snap back. God damn it, I hate it so much. So here's my big problem with rapid heavy missiles, is that you want... you pretty much want to be skirmishing, but you're always gonna end up brawling. It's really difficult to 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 effect to effectively use rapid heavies unless you're in some like like a gang that's designed behind them. So pretty much my target in that gang was the uh, the rupture. What bug? So, if you use the look at function on a ship, and then you release the button, sometimes it'll revert back to your ship, and then sometimes it'll go right back to the ship you looked at. So, ideally, when you hit look at, it should be the same exact function as if you use the look at command on your selected items, in that it moves your camera to look at the object, and then you can reset it by hitting look at again. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. I want to look at this customs office. So I use the look at command, and now my camera is on the customs office. If I want to reset my view, I hit the look at again, and I'm back on my ship. What occasionally will happen is that if I'm holding down Alt and do this, 
it'll do this, and when I let go, it'll revert back when I let go, instead of just looking at and staying on the ship. The look at command when you're using the alt shortcut should be exactly the same thing as if I use the button, but quite often it doesn't when you're trying to look at a ship. It's very frustrating. It's infuriating. I hate it, and I've been told that that's how it should work, and I really dislike that. I don't know if that was poor communication on my part talking to a developer, but it doesn't make sense to me why that would be a thing. In fact, I might just do a bug report on it. I don't think I've ever done a bug report on it. It's not something you can really show with a screenshot, and I think it's something that's kind of difficult to reproduce. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, in trying to reproduce it. See that? That's what I'm talking about right here. It's resetting when I let go of alt. It shouldn't be doing that. What it should be doing is this. Instead, it, it fucking resets, and I don't know why it does that. It's stupid. It's really stupid. And then if I move my mouse around, it's fine. So it resets. I let I leave it. I hold down Alt for a little while, and that's fine. It's a fucking bug. But the developer that I was talking to did not agree with me. So there's that. It's likely that the jackdaw is just going to fuck off, but we'll try this. He's warping. That's this is where pre-lock would have been very useful, but actually, I had decent lock range. I could have pre-locked him and neutered him. Yeah. I forgot that I had a lock range of 80. I'm used to lock range with a Hyperion of like 67. I'm used to not just not being able to do that. Actually, I don't think it's the Hyperion. I forgot which ship it is that has the short lock range. He's in docking range now. Yep. It doesn't look like it, but he is. Station's kind of absurd. Most loot drops in combat are trash? No, not at all. That's not true at all. Also, combat ships have limited cargo holds to hold mods. Um, that can be true, and it's also not true. It depends on the type of ship you're flying. If you're flying a cruiser or smaller or a battle cruiser that's not as reliant on uh, having a cap injected tank, um, then it's actually pretty easy to loot pretty much several ships worth of modules. Um, battleships in general, if they're going to be PvP fit, are likely going to have a cap uh, cap booster.
If you're poor, then skipping loop loop might be worth it. I don't agree with you at all. <laughs> it really depends on what you're looking for out of this game, Amy. That's I I generally don't agree with you. I mean, if you're looking to make money, PvP is not a good way to make money. So if you're so focused on making ISK, then you shouldn't be PvPing. But I don't really know what you're trying to what you're what you mean by those statements. Yeah, and Vice is very correct, and it really depends on what you're flying. Or fighting, I should say. Pirates can make a lot of money off PvP. But that's mostly by shooting at people that are not looking for PvP. Uh, looking, shooting at people that do an exploration or missions, things like that. <laughs> what kind of loot can you get from drops that are worth anything? It's a good thing Vice of Virtue is actually in this, this chat. Cause Vice, that's, that's how he makes his money essentially is, by doing PvE and then killing people that are doing PvE. Because people that do PvE tend to fit a lot of expensive stuff to their ships. Because they don't really anticipate dying. Getting faction drops and ships is rare. It depends on who you shoot. It depends on who you're trying to shoot. <laughs> Check donations. Oh wow! It's been given isk, and I just messed up my uh. It's one one pixel over. Oh jeez, are we good? We're good. Well, thanks a lot for the donation. Yeah, I had like five. I had five million isk at the start of the stream. I got I got a little bit back on uh. On insurance, actually insure a battleship, so now we're back to battleships. <laughs> Yay. I, I had bought, like, I don't know, like 1.5 to 2 billion is worth of ships to go lose, so I need to go lose them to... I need to lose a couple just to make enough is to uh, actually have the insurance to insure them all now. <laughs> I appreciate that, thank you. Hundred dollars. Oh, you're talking about a money m donation. Oh well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Come on, that's very generous of you. Thank you. There's a material jumping to hula. Oh shit. Okay. Um, Macarial. Honestly, I'm not really equipped to deal with a Macarial. But if I have a little bit of support, then I can definitely do that. What? Probably a shield tank, I guess? Did I hear about $11,000 donation? No, I have not, Turbo. I've heard about donations like that for other streams. Pretty crazy. Yeah, it, it depends on the fitting. Um, it's it's just kind of in interesting with materials because they can go armor or shield tank with uh, kind of uh, frustrating frequency. It, it, you can go one way or the other. It doesn't really matter. Which way you go? Both um, armor and shield tanks have um, their advantages and weaknesses. Kamara accidentally, accidentally donated eleven thousand dollars. What? Whoa. Okay. I don't see a mock. I see an Eos. It'd probably be near, near Cormona Gate, I guess. Yeah, 
Oh my god. <laughs> wow, that's that's one hell of a mistake. That's like a, such a typical Eve mistake too, but it's not with your Eve stuff. <laughs> it's not it's not with your Eve money. The mock is in high psycho, oh, okay. I have this Myrmidon stuff in scam, which probably is going to be my best chance for getting a fight. Depending on if they're actually doing something. Oh, hey! Maybe something's going down over there. Yeah, I imagine it, Chris. I imagine. You need a cruise fin? I, I think a fin is just a bad ship for fighting carriels in general. But yeah, cruise cruise missiles would apply very well to a um to a mock. Come on, man. Okay, good. What is that? 15% hull, something like that? How awesome is that? <laughs> Very cool. Rapid Light Missile Launcher, rap Warp Speed Rigged Rattlesnake with Gecko. I never, I never thought about um, using Rapid Lights with the Rattlesnake. That's actually kind of interesting. You're absolutely right, that does work. No kidding. Hey, Radic Buddha. So, why do these things open in warp? Why are they open in warp? It's it's cool that I have a, a a warp animation, but what the fuck? Oh, oh, oh! I never saw that. Look at that little animation. Look at the lights. Oh, I never saw that. Okay, so it's some sort of warpy thing. Neat.
the typhoon should be getting rid of all of its like waste and all the poop and stuff from the crew. So like when these things open up, just a bunch of waste, like a little cloud of waste should come out. That's what should happen. What is that icon? Ew! <laughs> That's Mimitar. Eject it in a waste. It's gonna be in dead space somewhere. No one cares. Hey, War's Evil Soul. How's it going, man? Kinda of sad. Some people are talking about PvP and local, but I don't see any ships in space. Here we go. These are probably the Myrmidon's drones. I was going to try to kill this uh, slicer. Oh well. Merm, Cinnable, Jackdaw, and Hula, and Novice. Oh no. Okay, I'll be heading over that direction. This game is weird? Eh, uh, yeah. It is pretty weird, uh, Pent. Especially if you have no idea what's going on. Just a lot of ship moving around and nothing really happening on screen. 
It's an interesting game. Um, I've been playing it for almost 10 years now. And a lot of people in the, the chat that are talking right now have been playing this for five years, 10 years, etc. It's, uh, it's actually a pretty cool game. But, um, it takes a little bit of back knowledge to understand really what's going on on the screen. There's a lot of really intimidating things that you see on the screen. Feel free to ask questions. Hopefully my Zerkers are still there. Would not be surprised if someone borrowed them. Just as I borrowed those uh, ogres. I've only heard of it. Yeah, it's been around since uh, 2003, Pent. I've almost been playing for 10 years. Oh, there's the Merman stuff. Oh, they're taking my stuff, those fucking assholes! That's actually a lot of my damage output, too. That is less than ideal. Looks like he's just reproaching the gate. There's the room.
A little bit too much. You can do it, little berserker! That was pretty cool. I'm surprised I did as well as I did against that Myrmidon. That guy's a triple rep. What the hell? I guess it really helps to, you know, destroy a guy's cap with a heavy nude for a while. <laughs> yeah, that is a pretty good uh, Tech 3 Afterburn, isn't it? It's like exactly the right place to have it. Oh, fuck off. You're gonna be that way? Fine. Why are there so many bursts? What is this? Eve University students! Hello! Ah, oh, I just did spent that big repair fee for nothing with that Drake gone. That's too bad. You didn't reload the rep? It's rep. It's reloaded. I just dragged some paste onto it. Yeah, 12 million isk uh, repair fee is pretty steep, for sure. I was kind of hoping I could just, um, you know, kill the Drake and that'd be make it worth it, but not so much.
Can you see the kill medals? Yes. Hundred men AB. Ooh. Whoa! I am glad this Vexor's drones were not on me for the entirety of that fight. Oh man, that would have been painful. That was one hell of a gank fit Vexor. Yeah, it's trip rep Merm. I'm surprised how well my heavy newt affected it. I mean, I was forcing him to burn at me the entire time, which is a huge cap drain, and then I was heavy newting him pretty much the entire time. And he was forced to actually run his reps. Because the, the DPS is pretty much a perfectly applied 700 DPS from missiles onto his ship. So. I'm surprised. It would have been the same if I was shooting at, say, like an armor tanked uh, cruiser. But if the cruiser was MVDing at me, I'd probably hit perfectly. Yeah, I, I've seen gank vexers that do ridiculous DPS. The thing is, that would be a blasters. Um, that that vexer is designed for all the drone DPS. Wait, where is that? That's at Station Five, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I mean that's a that's a pretty good example of um, pretty much why I like to have that six standard plate because you you pretty much end up tanking and ganking in a way with the rapid heavy missile launcher fits. So having some sort of buffer to survive a reload to actually kill a target is pretty important on the typhoon. Anyway, it's also a big reason why I'm not a huge fan of the Raven for the same type of work. The Raven's going to have better application. It actually can fit a, like a target banner and stuff. But it doesn't have really any ability to have good buffer. It, it doesn't have enough low slots for a good uh, active armor tank. And if you're doing a shield tank, an XLASB is a, a pretty awful option. At the very least, with the Ansel armor rep, you can keep your t uh, active tank going. Do I have any Zerkers in here? No, I'm going to have to buy those. Okay, that's fine. That was another thing. I was missing a lot of damage output from drones. Kind of sad. Nine hundred fifty DPS showed me your fitting. Uh, it'd be double mag stab, double drone DDA, um, thermal drones, void, neutrons, overheat. Sounds about right. You can pretty easily, well, not easily, but you get around 900 DPS. With web, Ogre 2s aren't better. Um, Jeanette, so my, or Ginny, my big thing with running around in a Typhoon is that I'm often shooting things at around, say, 20km, or I'm, I'm moving around a lot. I'm not necessarily brawling with the ship. I don't really want to be in web range against a lot of my targets, which means that I want a fast-moving drone. The Ogres are the slowest heavy combat drone. Berserkers move quite a bit faster. So they'll get to target faster, and they'll also track a lot better when they get to that target. And that's important because I'm not often going to be webifying a target.
A target painter is awful. No, not really. Change web to target painter? Oh, no. Webifier is always preferred over target painter as long as you're in range for the web. If I didn't think I was ever going to be in range with Webifier, yeah, target painter wouldn't be a bad idea. Augmented drones also cost a, a fortune, Joshua. For a non-drone bonus ship, I would not pay the money for augmented drones. It'd be it'd be adding like another sixty million isk to the ship. I mean, if anything, if I was going to invest in faction drones, I'd go for Republic Fleet Berserkers for the extra HPs. It'd give them a lot more longevity on field. Geckos would also be a really solid choice. It really does a good job of filling out the 100 meter bandwidth of my ship, but uh, that's that's 100 million S. That's just not really worth it in my eyes.
I'm pretty sure uh, planning here has links. Yeah. I need this fucking nude on him right now. Well, you know, if he's not tanking like this, maybe he's not linked. Freaking tank. <laughs> All right. Well, it seems like Rapid Heavy Missile Launcher is decent against Triple Arm Arms, for some odd reason. 
Who would have thunk it? Oh, I know it's the pressure. I know I understand it's a heavy new pressure. And like the this is two fights in a row where the the meat, the Myrmidon was having to run his prop the entire fucking time. So it was almost like I had two heavy newts on him because he was trying to maneuver. Still surprises me. God, I hate that bug. Nah, he's going to be in dock range. 100%. Rapid heavies, I think? Yep, rapid heavies. How exciting. Do I fly any drone boats? Uh, not all that often. I, I, I have flown Ishtars, uh, local tanked Ishtars, and Myrmidons. I fly, actually, I fly Myrmidons all the time. And I fly Dominixes quite a bit. And, um, yeah, I fly drone ships quite a bit, actually. <clears throat> New Moomitar textures are sexy? Yeah. Yeah, the skin looks pretty good. Very rusty. Alright, Adriel, have a good one, man. Thanks for watching. It was nice to have you. Ooh. Is that the medium? No? Are they gonna be at the large? No?
Do Tech 2 modules overheat faster than T1? They will burn out faster, yes. Yes. They, um, it doesn't show in game, but, uh, there is a heat emission attribute. Meta modules, um, like, um, faction modules and meta modules will, um, I, I believe, that, believe how it works is that they have a smaller chance to produce heat, so they will last longer. I believe they produce the same amount of heat, but they produce it less. Do you find better fights in Nullsec than Lowsec? Um, I don't fly in Nullsec, so it's very hard for me to, um, comment on that. But generally, faction warfare space is more packed with people in smaller concentrations, and there's just generally more people to fight in faction warfare space, so I usually stick to it. Um, I have been looking at using Thera wormholes to get over to, to Nullsec space, uh, like soft space and such and look for fights. And it's something I'm going to be experimenting with soon. But I've been able to get enough fights tonight where that hasn't been that much of an issue. I usually always stick with, uh, faction warfare. And then if that's dead, then I'll look elsewhere. Sometimes I go into Nullsec entry systems. So the, the systems that are connected directly to low sec or high sec. And I'll try to get fights with people that um, usually camp those gates. But primarily I stick to, to low sec. Yeah, that, that, Amy, that's a really big part of it as well. Um, one of the issues I would, co I constantly come up against whenever I'm flying around in null sec is the type of PP that is frequently happening around there. Yeah, there's a local spike, so this Vexor is probably bait. I think Richter's okay. Yeah, he's fine. That's just a matter of me getting out, and I'm fine too. The hell? Do it! Let the typhoon go! And there's this, is that, uh, Eve Uni? Oh my goodness. That's Eve Uni, and they're all suspect! What does the world come to? It is so weird to see Eve University with suspect timers. What is this? Eve University, 100% more pirate than Sardcade. <laughs> Oh my goodness.
I wish they'd bring back pirating as a thing. I wish who would bring back pirating as a thing? Yeah, like like Thekla was saying, it's it's the players that stop pirating. It has nothing to do with CCP. Well, it does have to do with CCP, but it's not like they, they banned it and stopped it. Some people still do piracy. There's just a lot less reason to do it. Which pretty much means you don't see pirates and you don't see anti-pirates anymore. Just bought uh, Galactic Civ 3 today and having a lot of fun with it. Oh, Fantastic Slayer. I've been seeing the ads for that on Steam. Yeah, it would be nice, Amy. It would be nice for there to be more reason for people to go into low sec and just dwell in non-factional warfare low sec. Or just don't for go into low sec for reasons other than factional warfare. But um, it would require a lot of changes. And I think there would be a lot of changes that players that we have communities built around. Things like either heavily nerfing or shifting away from high sec incursions into low sec and null sec incursions. Improving the ability of players to individual players or very small groups of players to make money in low sec. Things like that. A lot of the major reasons for piracy in the in the past is just the fact that you could make way more money in low sec doing level 4 missions. There used to be um, pretty big mission running hubs in uh, low sec. People would run them and make money off of them and um, they defend their turf. That's not the only reason, but it's, I think, one of the major reasons why you no longer see a lot of people just doing piracy. Besiege sites aren't horrible. No, they're not. They're not. In fact, they're, they're, they're awesome. People just stop ransoming. I think a, a bigger reason for that is that making money in this game became, is like has become more and more easy. So people are more concerned about showing that they did something last night in the form of killing other players than making back their space bucks off of other players and kind of you know building that social aspect. I think if money isk was harder to make, then ransoms would definitely be more of a thing. You don't have time in low sec. Uh, you do. You do. Are you really going to ransom that Atron you tackled? Absolutely. fucking I'm going to make him get on my team speak and sing my little teapot. Oh my gosh, I need some food. Food! Food, please! Need like an IV drip or something. <laughs> I don't have any vodka. The only thing I have right now is, uh, I have some whiskey. It's the only alcohol I have in the house. I'm sure that's just fine for you, Dietrich. Am I flirting? <laughs> Uh, Dietrich, are you going to Vegas for the love of God? Mind, body, and soul. Oh, 
You're not. God damn it, Dietrich. Useless. Are you doing a wedding? Fuck. Tell him to do it in Vegas. Oh, in Switzerland. Oh shit. Okay, that's actually pretty cool. I I'm jelly. Okay, you can ha you can have your wedding in Switzerland. And then you're going to Mexico for oh you did yeah you, you're you're as booked that sounds awesome. You're doing Iceland as well. Fantastic. Fantastic. You're you're what? You're not from Switzerland. What? Stop it. You're not Swiss. Shut up. You're totally not Swiss. You might have been born there, but you're not Swiss. Fuck you, guy. <laughs> Do you have a fast tip for a newbie how to make uh, money for a first plex? Um, you know, it's not... Okay, so here's my thing about plex as a new player. I recommend just paying for about... If you enjoy this game, you legitimately join this game... You played it for a while, you read up on it, tried it, and you're happy with it. I highly recommend that you play, you pay for at least three months. And get to, to know the game without having to put a whole bunch of time and effort and commitment into making the in-game currency to pay for your, your game time. Three months is actually about the amount of time it, it, would, it should take you if you are actively trying to learn and you're getting mentored and you're reading up on the game and you're having fun and you're, you're joining friends and making uh, friendships and joining communities for you to find an ISK source that could legitimately pay for your game time. Is it really going to be worth your time? It depends, it depends on you. It depends on your, what you enjoy doing in a game. But if you're past that three month period and you're able to fly, you know, you can, you can, you can fly cruisers or something like that for making money. Um, there's a lot of ways to make money. It, you, it can be incursions. It can be doing missions. It can be doing exploration. I'm being very vague and generic because I can't give you an easy tip. There is no easy tip for making money as a new player. It really comes down to what kind of social connections and what kind of resources you have available to making money. And unfortunately, I can't really say that over a stream. <laughs> like, uh, it, it comes down to making friends and finding out what you enjoy about this game and then pursuing that and, and seeing what you can do in the game that you enjoy to, to make your riskies. I know it's the answer, not the answer you want, but it's the answer I'm going to give you. Yeah, yeah, social connections. You know, it, even if you have a hard time with it, it, it's not that long of a train. It's actually a pretty low rank skill. It's a rank one skill for social, and connections is rank three. They they split it up, but you can you can do it. You'll get there eventually. You'll you'll be able to max out your 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 social skills, and you'll be good. And this is the real reason for um, bounty uh, for ransoms going away. Is like most players don't train up their fast talk skill, and they get they get tired of losing a bunch of money in their ship and stuff. <laughs> now I need real social connections. To hell with that. We got spaceships to fly. Alright guys, it's about that time. As, as you may have heard from my whining, my whinging, my complaining, I am hungry, I need dinner. So I'm going to be acquiring food soon. So I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Had a lot of fun. Actually got some decent fights with the Typhoon. Notably, I think, because I had a little bit of help there. But uh, that was actually pretty cool. It's, it's very rare to... Run up against battle cruisers, though. Battle cruisers, heavy missiles will apply perfectly against pretty much all the time. It's kind of nice. Pretty enjoyable ship to shoot at with heavy missiles. Um, I, 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 God, I, you know, I might just do it right now while, while I'm streaming. I'm just going to adjust this, uh, the tile, tiles here. Cause I'm so bad about adjusting this stuff. So I have a schedule, uh, for everyone that's watching on the web page on the browser. Um, I stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm deleting the Saturday date right now. I usually stream on uh, I usually stream Saturday and Sunday, sometimes Sunday, sometimes Saturday. 
but um, I can no longer really dedicate to that EU primetime stream as I'm usually uh, helping out my alliance in doing AT practice. We have a we I think always have a practice on Saturday morning around that time. So unfortunately, I can't really dedicate to that. But um, I will probably be streaming um, on Saturday, Sunday, maybe US prime time Saturday, maybe EU prime time Sunday. I've been wanting to stream with uh, um, Big Miker and doing some factional battle ship stuff. Uh, Dimitri, uh, one of the viewers in the chat, actually was very gracious and donated some ships to me, um, some faction battleships to me. And I, I would like to use the, lose them in a, uh, a fun fashion with Big Miker. Micro tends to be a pretty good bullet magnet, and we have, I've gotten some pretty good fights with them in the past. Other than that, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed for all those new players or those players thinking about the stream or thinking about the game. Uh, feel, pl- please follow the stream. Um, I'll, one of the nice things about watching a stream like this is that you're able to get a lot more information about a game, um, especially a complicated game like EVE Online. Um, a lot of the viewers in the chat themselves have been playing this game for a very long period of time. So if you're still interested, uh, you know, I'll be probably streaming this weekend. You can ask questions if you think you want to pull the trigger on the game. If you scroll down, there's also a 30 day trial link. So 30 days of free gameplay, um, for trying out the game. You can do that as many times as you want. Um, other than that, um, that's going to be it. Uh, please follow on Twitch. Uh, Twitter is probably the best place to follow for knowing when the stream is going to be going live into the future. Uh, sometimes twi- uh, Twitch notifications will go kaput. So, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I will probably be seeing you this weekend. So, until then, fly reckless. Good night.